This video is sponsored by Pianote. The Beatles producer George Martin is often described as the fifth Beatle, and this is for good reason. Many of the Beatles songs include quite significant contributions from George Martin. For example, although John and Paul both played piano, any time they wanted a more intricate or sophisticated piano part, they would turn to the classically trained George Martin. We can hear George Martin's piano chops on all of these songs, including Lovely Rita, Good Day Sunshine, and George Martin's most noteworthy piano performance is the piano solo on In My Life, which doesn't even sound like a piano. When the Beatles recorded In My Life, they left a gap for a solo, initially assuming it would be some sort of guitar solo, but they later decided it might be fun to have something slightly more inventive in there. So George Martin was tasked with composing a piano solo, but when he came to record it, he soon realised that he'd written it at too fast of a tempo for him to perform it. Being the inventive George Martin though, he soon worked out a clever way to record the piece at its intended tempo. And I quickly composed a little section for a piano, but I couldn't play it. Um, I couldn't play it because it was too intricate at the speed I wanted it done. So I said um, to Jeff, OK, let's use the wound up piano technique, which is what I used to do with Billy J. Kramer. Drop the speed of the tape down a to half what it is. So you hear everything an octave down and it's half the speed. And then I could play the piano exactly the notes I wanted quite effectively. The two part counterpart. It's rather like a Bach two part invention. speed, the octaves come back again and the speed comes back again and it sounds rather like a harpsichord. We did this while the Beatles were absent and I played it to John when he came back and he was knocked out. He said, that's gear, that's great, fantastic, we'll keep it in. The piano solo on Rocky Raccoon was also allegedly recorded in the same way by George Martin where he records it at half the speed. and then place the tape back at double speed so the solo is not only being played much faster, but an octave higher. So that harpsichord sounding solo on In My Life is actually a sped up piano. But George Martin did actually play some harpsichord on some Beatles records. He played a harpsichord on Fixing a Hole. <laughs> and he played an electric harpsichord on Because. Another keyboard instrument that George Martin played on quite a few Beatles songs is the harmonium. We can hear George Martin's harmonium playing on The Word, Cry Baby Cry, A Day in the Life and Being for the Benefit of Mr Kite. Now speaking of being for the benefit of Mr Kite, it's George Martin who created the kaleidoscopic circus music instrumental that happens in that song. John Lennon tasked George Martin with creating the atmosphere of a circus, and as you'll hear from this clip, although George did originally think of finding a circus style steam organ to record for the song, in the end he wound up cutting up a collage of clips of pre-existing recordings of steam organs and circus sounds in an early example of sampling. My hurdy-gurdy sounds were, in fact, uh, the forerunner of today's samplers because all I was doing was taking existing recorded sounds and chopping them up and using them for my own purpose. You disappoint me. I, I had you in my mind walking around fairgrounds looking for the right sound. Well, do you know I did that? And I, I really wanted to find a steam calliope, but it would have taken about three years to program the damn thing. Pianote is an online interactive resource for learning how to play the piano. You might already be familiar with Pianote's YouTube channel, but they also have an excellent online service where you can access tons of exclusive videos and resources to help you not only learn songs, but develop skills which you can then apply across your playing. Pianote have actually recently added hundreds of new songs which are available to learn with interactive sheet music, including actually many of the Beatles tracks that we've mentioned in today's video. 
this sheet music is synced to the original record to help you work out where you are in the song. And you can even adjust the speed of the playback, add a metronome, and create practice loops to help you master particularly tricky sections. There are so many classic songs available to learn on piano that there's bound to be plenty of songs on there which you've always wanted to learn. To learn more about piano, follow the link in the description and do consider subscribing to their YouTube channel. Now, perhaps the most obvious and most impressive contribution that George Martin made to the Beatles' music is his orchestration. George Martin was classically trained as an oboist at Guildhall, so he was intimately familiar with classical music and classical instrumentation, something that the Beatles were not. So George Martin was not only able to introduce the Beatles to this side of music, but he was able to put together, orchestrate and conduct the various strings and horn sections that we hear on the Beatles songs. Of course, songs like Yesterday or Eleanor Rigby would be very different songs without the iconic strings parts that they have. I Am The Walrus is another example of a song which is very dependent on the George Martin composed strings and horn parts. But I think of all of the scores that George Martin wrote and arranged for Beatles songs, his work on Strawberry Fields Forever has to be my favourite. This cello trumpet arrangement really is evidence of George Martin being the fifth Beatle. For the last three minutes of the song, George Harrison and Paul McCartney are barely present. The song is being harmonically carried by these stunning lines written for cello and trumpet. And these lines have some real character to them. George Martin made some really interesting decisions when he wrote these lines. Like this triplet based cello line we get here. And this beautiful four part trumpet harmony. Now, beyond all of these instrumental contributions that George Martin made to the Beatles songs, perhaps the most important role that George Martin played was that of a galvanizer. He was able to guide the Beatles, helping to facilitate all of their amazing ideas that they themselves certainly didn't have the technical know-how to pull off. Especially in the 1960s, when pop music was very much looked down on as an inferior style of music compared to classical music, George Martin saw the worth and creativity in the Beatles' music and gave 110% of his work and resources to making their music as good as possible. Well, we worked together for almost a decade and it, 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 the role changed somewhat. I mean, to begin with, I was the master and they were the pupils. At the end, I think I was the pupil and they were the masters. And during the Pepper period, it was my function was really was to try and extract from them the maximum of their talent and try and find out what they wanted to hear. In the case of Paul, he was very articulate and always had a very good idea of what he wanted and had very good ideas too. In John's case, he had marvellous ideas, but they were a little bit difficult to realise. He wasn't a very practical man. He couldn't change a fuse, you know, and he certainly didn't know the, the, the instruments that could be used. So he would come to me and describe the sound that he would want, and I would then try and give him what he wanted. The thing is, if George Martin was producing the Beatles today, he almost definitely would have been listed as a songwriter on all of the songs we've talked about today, because that's how things are done nowadays. Anybody who contributed even the smallest amount to the songwriting and composition process of a song today gets some sort of songwriting credit, because that's largely where the money is made, which is why today songs have such long lists of songwriters. So although George Martin had very integral contributions to all of these Beatles songs, on paper, he got paid no more than just his usual production fee. But as you'll hear from this clip that I'll leave you with today, George Martin certainly wasn't frustrated by any lost potential earnings, and instead was just very pleased to have had the opportunity to work with some of the greatest songwriters of all time. But you work, as I say, still very hard, and you're, and you're 69 years old. Um, you obviously don't work for the money, you don't 
need the money. Um, you made enough, but not out of the Beatles, interestingly. Well, no, I mean, the curious thing is that once the Beatles finished, I made far more money because um, people seemed to think that I had something to offer them. And, um, but you weren't on a cut with the Beatles, or you weren't on a percentage? Oh, I was, but, uh, but only after a time. Uh, when I left EMI, well, certainly when I worked for EMI, I wasn't. And uh, when I left EMI, I managed to squeeze a tiny bit out of them, which actually paid for the building of the studios that we did. But do you kick yourself that you didn't say to them in the beginning, look, you know, give me one percent? Oh, I've been awfully lucky. You can't look back and say you shouldn't have done that or you should have done that, you know. You have to take it as a whole. And as a whole, I've had a wonderful life. I've, been, I've met the most wonderful people, worked with the greatest of artists. I've been very fortunate. I've got no, no gripes at all. Mm -hmm.